we will always fall short. As Jesus has mentioned to Peter, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. And that we have to acknowledge that. We, have the, we need to have the humility to acknowledge that we will never reach up to God's righteous standard. And it is through grace that we are able to approach His throne confidently. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about the topic of approaching the throne of grace and mercy with confidence. What is grace? Grace is the act of receiving something that we do not deserve and mercy is the act of not receiving something that we deserve. So as we know that we have all fallen short of the glory of God, all of mankind have fallen short from the glory of God. When we look, up, when we look at ourselves, we will realize the wretchedness and the sinfulness of our human nature. And we can't seem to get rid of it and we can't seem to run away from it. It is part of our nature. And no matter how hard we try, we seem to fall short of His glory. And that we often question ourselves, are we worthy enough to approach God with confidence that I am so tainted with sin, that I am such a wretched person and how can God forgive me? And how can God receive me with love? That after all that I have done and I do not deserve it and so the biggest gift of grace that God has shown to mankind is true the through the death and resurrection of his son that his son has given us the gift of salvation for all mankind who has fallen short of his glory that Jesus is the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through Him. We are able to unite with God despite the brokenness and the sinfulness of our human flesh. For Paul, for Paul mentioned in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 9, Since therefore we have now been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Verse 10, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. We are reconciled to God by the death of his son, that Jesus has atoned for our sins, so that the veil can be torn into two and that we can approach God with confidence and with full assurance of our salvation, that we can approach God with confidence without fear of condemnation. And we no longer have to live in fear. For Paul in Romans chapter 8 verse 15 also mentioned, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, that we are able to freely approach His presence with confidence and without fear. For we know that we have been justified and we know that we have been forgiven despite our brokenness and despite the sinfulness of our human flesh. So to all of you who are listening today, it is my prayer and encouragement that we continue to press on and to, uh, and to approach and to humble ourselves before the Most Holy Holy One, 
and that we humble ourselves acknowledging that we are sinful people in need of His grace and that we can never ever ever reach up to His standard of righteousness. But it is true, His Son Jesus Christ, that we are able to approach this throne of grace and mercy with full, with full confidence that we are accepted and we are adopted as children of God. That, he, that God's love abides in us. Whenever we sin against God, we should not feel discouraged and tell ourselves that God will no longer accept us. And we should not stop praying and reading His Word. We should not stop seeking His face despite us struggling in our sins because God has a way of redeeming us and, and we hold fast to that gift of grace on the cross that while we were still sinners, Christ has died on the cross for our sins and He has given us what we do not deserve. He has given us the greatest act of love he has shown us the greatest act of love and mercy that while we were still sinners and rebelling against Him, He has laid down His life to provide us a way to be reconciled to the Father. And despite us undeserving of that, He still sacrificed Himself so that we can be re reconciled with God and approach God with, with confidence and with humility. And we acknowledge that we will always fall short. As Jesus has mentioned to Peter, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. And that we have to acknowledge that. We, have the, we need to have the humility to acknowledge that we will never reach up to God's righteous standard. And it is through grace that we are able to approach His throne confidently. So it is my prayer that we all continue to approach this grace, this throne of grace and mercy, despite our failures and mistakes, that we know that God is still here for us and He has accepted us as long as we repent. We know that God will never hold this against us. So if, if you are hearing this and you are struggling with sin today, I pray that it is that it is my prayer that you continue to seek the Lord with all your heart and you do not be dismayed and do not be discouraged by whatever struggles that you have. I pray that God will grant you the peace and His love and set you free. I pray that God will continue to show His grace and mercy to you and that you are able to approach this throne of grace and mercy with full confidence without fear that it is through your weakness and our weakness that God's power will abound and that His power and His glory will be made known through our weakness. God will use what is imperfect to showcase His perfection and His, and His glory. That's all from me for today and I hope that this speaks to you wherever you are. And I will see you next time. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. I've delivered.